Hello everybody! Welcome to Just Up Right. My name is Doc Jean Ruder. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I'm your foreign educated physical therapist guide to U.S. application. I hope you guys are doing great. So first, the announcement. Uh, on January 20, 2024, I'm going to have the master class, the USPT Turbocharge 2024. So this is a master class live online through zoom uh we're going i'm going to discuss the step-by-step -step process through uh to u.s application as a foreign educated physical therapist so many people are asking me emailing me messaging me uh to help them uh, with their app u.s application and it is very hard to explain it through email so if you want to answer your hundreds of questions if you want clarity what you should do what you should not do so that you will not waste your time you will not waste your money by committing expensive mistakes this master class is for you okay so you are needed here in the u.s there is tons of job waiting for you here as a physical therapist so better gear up and attend the master class so that you will be guided well okay so what we're going to discuss today are the requirements uh, for application to the state of texas so i receive um you know emails requests uh, for the texas state so what we're going to do is we're going to their website and see what are the requirements for foreign educated physical therapists to apply license in Texas. That's coming right up. All right, guys, so we are here on the um, physical therapy, board, Texas Board of Physical Therapy examiner's website. Okay, so apply by examination. This is under apply by examination. So as you can see, they have the uh, latest, what is the upcoming NPTE. Okay, they do not list all the NPTE, but if you want to know that, you can click here and it will take you to FSVPT website. Okay um these are the steps okay for applying uh, for a licensure by exam okay so number one you have to make an online account okay so click whether you're a pt or a pta okay uh, and you have to follow through uh what uh you need to um fill out online okay and they will tell you the fee at the end of the application okay and it says here you must have social security number but if you do not have one you must submit a SSN statement stating that you do not have one. So that is good news because some states will not even entertain you like California, Nevada, and Indiana. If you don't have social security number, you cannot proceed with your application. Okay? Step two, uh, this official transcript, this part does not uh, apply uh, to foreign educated physical therapists, okay? So it says here, this ap applies only to graduates of CAPTE accredited programs, okay? So all others must submit educational evaluation, okay? So you must ha undergo the credentialing program through FCCPD, ICD, IERF, or uh, University of Austin in Texas, okay? And then they need also passport type photo, your picture two by two recent okay must be submitted by either mail or digitally okay so by mail computer printed photos are not acceptable and will delay the processing of your application photos must be standard photographic paper with the printed name date of birth signature of the applicant on the reverse in the in dark ink okay so for more information click here by email, an email digital photo is acceptable if it adheres to the U.S. Department of State's specifications found here. So click here to know, to know the specifications about the picture. Okay, so letter of completion. So for graduates of CAPTE accredited outside of Texas, they need a letter of completion. 
uh, graduate of Texas got the accredited uh, programs. Okay, uh, their director. So this is not for foreign educated. This is for uh, um, students who graduated here in the U.S. Okay, so as you can see here, does not apply to foreign educated applicants. Okay, Texas jurisprudence assessment module. So you have to take the jurisprudence examination, and the school uh, the score report will be directly sent to the board of PT in Texas, and they also require fingerprinting. Okay. You can track your progress toward licensure on the applicant status lookup page. Okay, processing for documents uh, submitted could take up to three business days. So that is actually fast, guys, compared to other states. Issuing a license could take three to ten business days once the last required item is received and processed. Okay, so this is just an um, overview of, you know, how you're going to take the examination so you have to register through fsbpt schedule your exam take your exam uh, pass your exam and that's how you're gonna get your license uh, for uh, texas okay so that is by examination let us click here apply by endorsement okay so now here we are for uh, applying to texas okay by like for a license uh, by endorsement. So what does it mean? So it means that you are licensed, for example, in the state of New York or Illinois or Florida, wherever you are, and you want to practice in Texas. So you want to transfer your license from those states to state of Texas. So again, you have to um, uh, apply online, okay? So and pay online. Okay, and then these are the requirements. So complete the items below in any order. Okay, um, the official transcript. So here, uh, it talks about the transcript again, but these are actually for CAPTI accredited program. If you're a graduate of the U.S. school under CAPTI, okay? So if you are not, if you're foreign educated, then you have to have the educational evaluation, which we're going to discuss later, okay? The passport style picture that we talk about, okay? A letter of completion is no longer required if the transcript shows the date that the degree was conferred. Uh, license verification. So they need uh, whatever state you are from, they, that you have to request from that state. Uh, of course, you have to pay for that. Uh, for them to uh, send uh, that you are really uh, holding a license from the state of New York or whatever state you are transferring from to the state of Texas. Okay? Uh, exam score report an exam score report must be directly sent from FSBPT to uh, the Board of Physical Therapy in Texas you have to, pa uh, to uh, pass the jurisprudence examination for state of Texas and then the finger printing so again online if once you make the um, account you can check the status of your application online under applicant status lookup page okay the processing of the license could take three to ten days once the last required item is received in process applicants for licensure by endorsement are not eligible for temporary license so that is a quick view of uh, how to apply by endorsement so once you get ready to apply then you just click pt or pta okay and then these you know you can continue here read the guidelines okay and then make your account so they they accept the following credit uh, cards uh, for payment okay so these are the guidelines okay so then hit continue and then you get started with uh, you know uh, filling out this information okay and then after you fill out all this information then you hit submit the form okay So this is uh, for foreign trained applicants, okay? So um, we're going to look at the uh, requirements for foreign educated physical therapists and then the requirements in general for all applicants, okay? So here, as you can see, uh, foreign trained applicants, um, they have a list of approved credentialing entities, okay? So if you click on that, 
it will take you here to this page. So the cred credentialing uh, agencies accepted in uh, Texas are FCCPT, ICD, IERF, and the University of Austin at Texas. So these are the four credentialing agencies that you can use if you want to apply to the state of Texas, okay? So going back to that page, these are the required items for the state of Texas. So educational evaluation. So you must have uh, your entry-level physical therapy degree evaluated by a board-approved credentialing agency. So one of the four credentialing agencies that we mentioned. The credentialer will report to the board whether your degree is substantially equivalent to an entry-level degree in physical therapy granted by you by programs in the United States and whether you meet other specific requirements established by rule. If your education is lacking evidence of coursework requ required by the board, you will have to take those courses before you can be licensed, okay? So there's an exception, a degree from a foreign CAPTI accredited PT programs accepts you from evaluation requirement. However, applicants from CAPTI accredited programs must have a transcript and a letter of a completion sent by the school directly to the board. Okay, so um, there's a note here, very important. Many U.S. masters and DPT programs are not entry-level programs. Only graduation from accredited entry-level PT programs program eliminates your foreign trained status. Check with the school to determine whether the program is entry level and accredited, okay? So I, if you watch my previous videos, I mentioned there that uh, CAPTI only accredits the entry level doctor of physical therapy degree, okay? So it means that masters or transitional doctor of physical therapy, it means you have your bachelor degree in your country, uh, and then you do the transitional doctor of physical therapy. Transitional of doctor of physical therapy is not an entry level. And uh, the schools giving the transitional doctor of physical therapy program, uh, that part of the program, the transitional doctor of physical therapy, is not under CAPT. The only uh, program under CAPTI is the entry-level doctor of physical therapy, meaning that you went to school most likely here in the U.S. first year as a doctor of physical therapy program, okay, within the doctor of physical therapy program. If you earn your bachelor degree from non-CAPTI school, meaning outside of the U.S. that's not under the CAPTI, then you still need to go through the credentialing process, even though you have a master's or transition of doctor of physical therapy degree, okay? I hope that is clear. So another requirement is the TOEFL, okay? Test of English as Foreign Language. So it says all foreign trained applicants must make this minimum scores, except for applicants who meet one of the three exceptions listed below. Okay, so there are exceptions. We're going to read that later. We will not accept visa screen certificate as proof of passing TOEFL test. Okay, so I hope that is clear. So even though you already uh, have a visa screen certificate, you cannot use that in lieu of um, TOEFL. Okay, we do not accept other English proficiency tests, meaning Texas does not accept IELTS or any other English Test only TOEFL. So, if you took the test more than two years ago, the board will accept certified copies of your scores from your credentialer, okay, meaning FCCPT, ICD, you know, IERF, another licensing board, and the company that did your visa screen or US University. Okay, the board will accept more than one score report if you if it took more than one attempt to pass all parts of the TOEFL. You do not have to pass a section again if you have passed it on previous test date. So that is good, okay? So that is not um, true in other states 
or in FSBPT or FCCPT. Okay, so um, in Texas, you know, if you uh, watch my other videos, each state ha is unique. They have their own rule. They have their own requirement. But in Texas, for example, you know, someone mentioned to me before they apply. They had TOEFL, but they failed in one part. For example, speaking, um, and then uh, do they have to take the retake the TOEFL? You have to retake the TOEFL to pass the the speaking part. Okay, if you fail it the first part, first time. In other states, you have to pass all four so that they can use your TOEFL, okay? If you fail one of the sections, they're not going to accept that. So uh, the Texas allows uh, you, you know, to use your different TOEFL tests as long as you pass all four of them, uh, regardless of how many tests you did. But of course, it's a lot better if you take TOEFL and you pass all of them so you don't have to retake them, okay? So uh, there are three exceptions to TOEFL requirement. If you earned your PT degree in Australia, Canada, except Quebec, Ireland, New Zealand, and the UK, or you hold degree from foreign CAPT accredited program. Right now, as of the recording of this video, the only CAPT accredited program outside of the US is in Scotland, okay? So unless you're from that school, you're not exempted. Okay, number two, you hold a current license in another state and have been licensed in the U.S. for the past 10 years, okay? So that is an exception. Documentation required is the verification of license from a uh, state showing the length of license, sure, okay? Next, you are a citizen or a permanent resident of the U.S. or the holder of H-1B visa and have attended four or more years of secondary or high school or post-secondary college university education in the U.S. A total of 96 credits is required. Documentation required is a copy of passport or I-9 plus transcript or certified letter from the school. So these are the conditions if you want to be exempted from TOEFL. Look at these conditions. If you the, one of these is true to you, then you are exempted from TOEFL for the state of Texas, okay? So they also have a very important note here, having a U.S. master's or transitional doctor of physical therapy in uh, does not exempt, exempt you from the TOEFL requirement, okay? So very important. Okay, now um, here there's a note, foreign trained applicants must submit the following items in addition to the general requirements for licensure by exam or licensure by endorsement, okay? So these are additional on top of the general uh, requirements. So if we click that, it's gonna take us here to this page, okay? This is uh, information for all applicants, okay? So applicants whose license will be issued on or after January 1st, 2019 will need to comply with the new fingerprinting requirements. So they have a fingerprinting requirement in the state of Texas, okay? So app application fees are non-refundable. The application fee expires in one year. So you have to complete all the requirements within one year. If not, then you have to pay another fee, okay? Change of your address, uh, you have to report that to the board promptly. Expedited delivery of your license is possible. Your license will be mailed to you. If you need your license as quickly as possible, contact the licensing department for information about using an overnight service. But you have to take note, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Okay, online verification. You may provide physical therapy services upon online verification of license prior to receiving your paper license from the board. So meaning if you haven't received the paper license, as long as you are licensed online and you can see your name and your license number online, then you can start working. This applies both to, uh, to both permanent and temporary licensees. You no longer have to wait until you have received the paper license from the board, okay? So note, the board does not notify applicants directly of their application status. So you cannot email them and ask, how, how is my uh, status right now, okay? 
you have to check the status of your application online. So there is an online application for the state of Texas. So you have to create uh, the username and password, okay? Um, if you have received your applicant password from the board, if you are retaking the exam, you must contact the board to check your status, okay? So uh, for more information and to check applicant status, look up, look up okay? Uh, your PT or PTA school, school code is required on the application. So you have to click here to look for your school, okay? So another requirement is applicants with prior criminal history a review to determine licensure eligibility for individuals with prior criminal history can be requested by completing and submitting a criminal history evaluation form available at ptot.texas.gov under request a criminal history evaluation link. Okay, so issuing license could take uh, three to ten business days once the last required item is received and processed. Okay. So also you have to take note, if you see here on this side, there is a jurisprudence assessment module or JAM, they call it JAM, JAM. okay? So this, there is like, um, this is a required uh, test for Texas, okay? So as of June 1, 2017, individuals applying for PT license, either examination or endorsement, and licensees who are renewing their PT license, license are required to take the Texas Jurisprudence Assessment Module, okay? So for more information, you can go through uh, this page. I will put the link down below, okay? So if you don't have any idea what Jurisprudence exam, it's about the, the rules, the regulation, uh, of practice as a physical therapy, what you should and you should not do as a physical therapist, okay? So the ethics, you know, it comes to negligence, uh, abuse, etc. okay? So it's about the law for physical therapy practice in a certain state, okay? All right, there you have it, guys. So I hope that will help you, guide you with your application to the state of Texas, either by examination or by endorsement. And if you're a foreign educated physical therapist, we discuss all the requirements uh, that the Board of Physical Therapy of Texas need from you, okay? So I hope that will be helpful. Um, again, the upcoming Masterclass January 20, 2024, register now so you can get your spot, limited space only uh, for foreign educated physical therapists around the world so that you will master the process and be guided well. If you have any video suggestion questions, just put your comment down below. Don't forget to share this video to anyone you know who needed to process their u.s application and also like the video thumbs up so that youtube know that they can share this video to other foreign educated physical therapists who are needing answers to their questions i'll see you at the master class until the next video stay blessed